Now that we've finished our sketch, let's look at the pull tool and how we can use it to create geometry. The pull tool is going to be used to create geometry, but also to do a lot of modification to that. It lets you revolve, sweep, draft, scale, offset. It does quite a lot of things to help you do creation. Now to start, once we leave the sketch, you'll notice we're still in that heads up or that normal view. The best way to look at the model for pulling would be to go to the orient group and select the home view. To start, you'll notice that we have one surface in the tree. However, you notice there's a lot of sections on that. We'll refer to these as faces on the model. So every closed region in your sketch will form a new face. To start, let's zoom in on one of these pieces. To pull something on the model, the best way is to select what you'd like to pull. Once you do that, you'll notice that you have one face selected in the bottom middle of your screen. Also, you'll notice small arrows next to your cursor. That tells you the direction of the pull. Simply hold on the left mouse button, drag your cursor to dynamically pull that and thicken it into a solid. Once you're pulling, you can type in an exact value. I'm going to type in 15 millimeters. Remember, you're always pulling in the direction of the arrow. You don't have to select directly on the arrow here. Let's go back into a home view. You can either click the home button in the orient group or press the H key on your keyboard for home. Now that we've done that, let's pull in two things at the same time. We can select our same face over here as we just pulled and control select the main face in the middle of the model. Notice you'll see we have two faces selected on the bottom of your screen. Again, you don't need to hover over the faces or hover over the arrow. Simply pull it in either direction to extrude that into a solid. Notice as you're pulling, it creates a new region and actually merges these together into a new solid. Also, you'll notice the surfaces that are no longer touching each other have formed separate surface regions in the structure tree. Another thing to notice as we're creating this is that there's no additional line in between these pieces. These are automatically removed when you're pulling faces to the same height. What if we want to pull the middle face to the original 15 millimeter height here? Anytime you select a face in space line to pull, you'll notice a mini toolbar appears with options. These are going to be common options that are seen either in the pull options in the left middle side of the screen or our tool guides, specifically our up to tool guide. We can use this to snap one thing up to another. So clicking the up to button and then clicking on the second face will go to it. You also notice a little up to button next to my cursor. Also you'll notice once they're pulled to the same size or to the same height, the edge goes away. There's no more edge differentiating those two regions. This is because space lame has the this is because space slime has a direct modeling paradigm. This means that you're not going back to your sketch to modify the geometry, you're simply selecting on the geometry to make a modification. Let's click on two more surfaces. I'm going to select on the small rectangle here and control select the small rectangle on the other side. Again, you'll notice as I'm dynamically pulling these faces, they go up to the model and different heights. Now one thing we might want to do is to dimension these faces to somewhere else. If I click in white space, it clears my selection. If I click on our face here, and our face here, we can pull them at the same time. One thing to make a precise ruler dimension, which I use all the time, is our ruler icon in the mini toolbar. Again, as a reminder, this ruler icon is the same ruler icon in the options. We simply place it on the mini toolbar to make it a little bit closer to your mouse if you'd like to use it. Clicking on the ruler icon now lets you make a dimension. So if we want a dimension from the top face, simply click the top face and we can type that dimension in. You could type any dimension you want, two, three, four, five, and it sets that on the model. These dimensions you place aren't saved. As soon as you click in white space, that dimension will go away. The next thing I'd like to do is go back to the structure tree. In Space Climb, it's important to check to see what you have selected and also what's in your structure tree. If we have the solid we want, 
we might not need these remaining surfaces. These surfaces are left behind as the remainder of the holes that were initially in the model and the cutout on the front of the model. We can remove these now by simply going to the structure tree, right click, and deleting them. To select more at the same time, you can control select them or hold down shift and select the top and bottom and then right click and delete them. Now you've removed the surfaces which you no longer need on the model. Let's quickly look on pulling on faces on the design. You'll notice that I can pull on one face on the model and even though I pulled them initially at the same time, the two rectangles don't have to be symmetric and don't have to change together. Anytime I'm pulling or making a change in space claim, I can hit escape on my keyboard to cancel that operation. If I control select on two faces at the same time, I can modify them together. Notice pull is offsetting faces. They're always going towards each other or away from each other. I like to think of them as always growing and shrinking on the model. If I control select two additional faces, you notice I'm pulling all of them, growing them, and shrinking them at the same time. Also notice the pull tool itself. I'm pulling left to right because the pull arrow is left to right. If I hit escape to cancel this and select one, two, three, four, the pull arrow is facing up and down. Pulling up and down makes them larger and smaller. Going to left to right doesn't really do much. Again, hit escape to cancel that operation. But also, if we now want to make a cutout of the design, I can simply select these two faces and pull them straight through the model. Now those areas in the face is gone, unless I add a sketch and sketch that back into the model or to the design. One thing that I always find very interesting is pulling on an angled face. You'll notice as I pull on this face, it removes geometry from the model or adds geometry to the model. But it's always keeping those angled faces on one side or the other and using that as a reference. I'm going to hit escape to cancel this. A lot of people ask me, well, what if I want to pull it straight back? To do this, again, I would look at my tool guides. We see direction, revolve, draft, and sweep. I don't see anything here. The only thing I see here in my options is we have an option to cut. This is why it's important in space claim, because I want to not only select the face, but I want to select edges at the same time to give space claim more information. By control selecting a face and an edge, space claim is pulling it backwards and ignoring that reference and influence on the left side. If I hit escape and control select the second side, I can now pull them backwards together, pull them forwards together, and it's ignoring that reference. And I can also type in a value of five millimeters to pull them both back together. Another thing I want to look at is pulling on holes. Remember, there's going to be a big difference between pulling the edge of a hole, the axis of a hole, and a face. Typically, you'll want to be pulling on the face of the model. And you can always do this by checking the bottom right-hand corner to see what's selected. Just like pulling on faces we've seen before, we see a dimension on the screen, and as soon as you click that, you could type something in. I'm going to change this to 6 millimeters. Also, we saw me using up to earlier, and I can use up to when pulling on a hole. Simply select the hole, and I can use up to to snap one hole up to the same size as another. Simply clicking the face of the hole snaps that together. Now both holes are six millimeters, even though I didn't initially pull them at the same time. As we're pulling, we're typically adding more things to the model. You don't have to sketch everything out at the same time. If you'd like to add something to the model later, simply select one of the sketch tools like circle, and it's asking where you'd like to add the sketch. By clicking an axis or a face, you can put the sketch grid anywhere you'd like. I'm going to put it on our front face here. You also notice if I go to display, I can control our grid options as well. I can have fade to seam to grid on, 
clip seen above grid off, and you can toggle and play with this to see which you'd prefer to have. I'll have fade seen under grid on, and also clip seen above grid off. Now I'm going to make a hole, or a circle on this, right in the middle, and I'm going to type in 6 millimeters. Now again, remember to exit a sketch, you'll want to go to either the 3D button in the mode group, or click on full. Both will bring you into 3D. One thing to point out, you'll notice there's no surface in the structure tree when we do this. If you're inside of a part, and you sketch on a face, it will automatically imprint that onto the model. Simply select on what you'd like to pull, and pull it in one direction, or pull it in the other. Now I have a hole going straight through the part. Let's make another sketch while we're here. You can either click a sketch tool, and then click a face to sketch on, or you can select an object and click a sketch tool. If I click the axis as an object, and then click on the rectangular sketch tool, I'm automatically sketching a rectangle on that section. It's basically picking where you'd like the grid to go before you get there. I'm going to click on the plan view button and sketch a rectangle. I'm going to click on this top edge to start my rectangle and I want it to go down and snap to this line and go out 20 millimeters. Again, you can type in an exact value, but once you see 6 and 20, click to end your sketch. Always click once to start it and once to end it. Once done, we'll go to pull to start pulling on this surface. Once I have the surface created, I want to make a cutout on this side of the design and the other side. You'll notice if I click on the surface, we have an arrow on that surface. If I pull in the direction of the arrow, it guesses to add geometry to our part. If it's pulling in the opposite direction, as soon as it hits a model, it decides to cut geometry away. This is what I talk about with Spaceline making a guess as to what should be done on the part or the design. I'm going to hit Escape to cancel this. This is when I would go to our space claim option to determine what should be done. If I'd like to add, now I can add in one direction or the other. I'll hit escape to cancel that. If I want to cut, I can now cut in either direction. Hit escape to cancel. If I'd like to cut in both directions, click pull both sides, it's going to pull and cut at the same time. Also, while we're here, I told you we'd look at pulling on an axis of a hole. If I click on this axis, notice we already have pull both sides checked because we're still in the pull tool, and by dragging the axis, it basically pulls it and thickens that hole. Imagine putting a drill in a piece of wood and then pulling it in one direction. It's going to pull that into a slot. Now one thing I can do once I start pulling on an object, I may want to temporarily freeze that dimension that's created. To do this, hit the space bar on your keyboard, and it's going to freeze that direct dimension. Once that's done, you could look at your notes, you can figure out what size you want that to be, type in a number, and hit enter. Now we've pulled that slot 5 millimeters apart. Let's go to our home view now. The last thing we want to do is look at pulling both rounds and chamfers on a model. To start, I'm going to click on our edge here. Once it's selected, we can now pull this in the direction of the arrows to add a round by default. If you're pulling in the arrows, you notice it gets bigger and smaller as you pull. When a round is selected, a dimension pops up on screen and you can type in a value. I'm going to type in 10 millimeters and hit enter. To round multiple edges at the same time, simply hold the control key and select on one, control select two, control select three edges, and you can add rounds. 
In fact, you can always just select the edges and type in a value. By typing in 10, I've automatically added 10 millimeter rounds to those edges. Next, let's look at the top of these holes. Again, clicking on an edge allows me to type in one millimeter and add that to the model. We showed pulling up to with faces, up to with holes. I can also use up to with edges. Select the three edges I want to work with, click up to, and select on that initial round. It pulls them up to that first value of one millimeter. Let's add some rounds to the front of this model. What we're going to do is actually add a full round to these front sections. This can be done by control selecting the two edges we want to add the round on. As I start to drag them together, you'll notice it starts to add large rounds. If you drag back past zero, we automatically calculate and snap that full round value on. Again, simply selecting the two edges and pulling them in and then back past zero adds a full round to them. Another method is to simply select the three faces you want to add a full round between. By right clicking, you have the option to place a full round between those three faces, and the middle face will be absorbed by the round. Again, select one, two, and three, and right mouse button will add a full round in between those three faces, absorbing that middle face. Both produce the exact same result. The next thing we'll look at is adding a few more rounds and some different round options. Remember, to add rounds onto a part, you can always double click to grab a loop of edges on the model. If I want to add the entire loop of the top face, remember double clicking will toggle through the different edge options. I'm going to double click until I have this top loop. I want to round everything except for these two edges. So by simply holding the control key down, I can unselect them from my design. Now I'm rounding just the top edges together. And I'll type in a round of one millimeter. One thing I want to look at is how the order of operation with rounding affects a design. I'm going to zoom into this corner. Notice if I click on this edge and I add a round, how it looks different. I have a small sliver coming together. And in fact, I can click on one edge, or remember, I can double click to get a loop. And I'm going to make this two millimeters. On this edge, again, I can click one edge, add a round, or double click and add two edges. Notice you can see the difference of the round and how it looks, so I start to add this to my model and to my design. I'll type in two millimeters. On a round section and a corner section, we try to have treatments where you can choose the different option you want to have. So you can either have it sweep around the corner or be a mitered corner. So by clicking on that option, the junction between them, you can choose which you'd rather have, even if you're doing this after the creation of the rounds. Typically though, it makes sense to add these vertical rounds first. So by control selecting these small edges, I can add rounds to all of them at the same time. It's common to add vertical rounds before adding the horizontal rounds. And I'm going to type in two millimeters. Now, let's say I want to add a loop around the top again. Double click, double click, double click until we get the edge loop we want, and then control remove the sections we don't want around. And I'm going to type in one millimeter. The last thing I'm going to look at is how I can add chamfers to a model. If I click an edge, I always have options, whether it's in the mini toolbar or in the options panel. Round is the first option we use for edges, but in addition to this, we have the option for chamfers. If I type in two millimeters, there's now a two millimeter chamfer on this top edge. You'll notice there's an option to pull it in one direction or the other to make a D by D chamfer where they're not the same. 
and you also have the option to do a distance by angle chamfer. In addition to this, you'll notice they have properties for both rounds and chamfers in the properties panel. If I select on our edges here, one, two, three, I can also pull them up to that first chamfer to make them the same size. Additionally, if I double click on a round that's already been created, notice you can toggle around to a chamfer after the fact. So there's a lot that can be done for finishing design with both rounds and chamfers. So I hope you've seen all of the different ways you can use pull to both create and modify a model. Pull is a very powerful tool that does a lot of different things. So check the help to learn everything that it does.